Good evening everyone, this is Montessa Montañez and we are the group 6 and we are going to discuss about Bicol region or the region 5. So first, ato ilailahan si Bicol region. The Bicol region or region 5 is one of the 17 regions of the Philippines. Bicol is composed of four provinces, the Bicol Peninsula, the southeastern of Luzon Island, the two island provinces adjacent to the peninsula. The Bicol region is located in the southernmost tip of Luzon Island, the largest island in the Philippine archipelago. The total land area of the region is 18,054.3 km, which is 5.9% of the total land area of the country. Around 69.3% of the total land is alienable and disposable with the remaining 30.7% is public forest areas. So next, let's meet the literary talents of Biko. So first is Abdon Balde, a fiction writer from Owas Albay and the recipient of the National Book Award and the Jaime Laya Best Book for Fiction. Next is Adrian Rimudo, an essayist and the 2008 first prize winner of the Salitanong Taon of the Filipinas Institute of Translation. Next is Alvin Yapan, a multi-awarded fictionist and film writer whose works were recognized by the Don Carlos Palanca Memorial Awards for Literature in year 1997, 2002, and 2003, and NCAA Writers Prize in year 2005, National Book Award 2006, and Cinemalaya Philippine Independent Film Festival and Kiaro International Film Festival in 2009, and 28th Festival di Sini di Buguta in 11, um, 2011, and the Gawad Yurian in year 2012. Next, we have Angela Manalang Gloria, a poet and literary editor who authored entitled Revolt from Hymen, a poem protesting against marital rape and the book titled Poems, which was an entry to the Commonwealth Literary Awards. Um, Gloria was born in Guagua, Pampanga, but Bicol and settled in Tabaco, Albay. Next is Benvenido N. Santos, a Filipino-American writer who was excelled during the martial law for his writings. Though born and raised in Tondo, he moved in Daraga in Albay and served as president of Legazpi College and held several administrative posts at the University of Nueva Saceres. His numerous published works include novels, short stories, collections, poetry, and non-fiction. Now we have Carlo Arihola an award-winning poet, storyteller for children, and playwright from Pili Camarene Sur. His published poetry collection is entitled Wala Akong Bitbit na Sawi Ang Puso Tuwing Naglalakbay. Esteleto Jacob, one of the 40 authors published by the National Commission of Culture and the Arts for their um, Ubud Writers Series project. His trap book is a collection of poetry in Bicol entitled Mga Mirukit Dukit, a recipient of Special Achievement Award in Creative Writing, com conferred by the University of Nueva Saceres and the recipient of various awards for his literary works. Next, we have Frank B. Pinones Jr., a multi-award literary artist popular for his Ragang Rinaranga in 2006, Sinaraisay, Haluhalung Blognin, Blognin Buhay in 2011, and P.I. and Kansyonin Taong Lipod. Pinones is also an actor. Next, we have Gudi Hardo Gudi Kaliha, a multi-biologist, a writer, and a publisher. He is a recipient of the Premio Tomas Ari Hola para sa literaturang Bicol non and is known for his works Borak and Masirang Nabitoon Kan Kabikulan. Other published works include um, Science in the Bondocks and other essays on science and society in year um, 1987, Clash by Night or A Play in Two Acts in year 
1986 and had we but the world enough and time toward an ideology and ecology in year 1974. Next, we have Honesto June Bissimo Jr., a teacher, writer, editor, and one of the founding members. He is a founding member of Kapu. Kabulig Bicol. His notable work includes Baguio's October in year 2009. He is also one of the editors of Bangarao Can Arte Literatura as in Cultura. Jaime Jesus Berlandan, a poet, songwriter, graphic artist, and musician. He has published a book of Tagalog poems um, titled Maynila Libro ng Pobia in 1999 which is now considered by his young followers as an important and influential collection. His recent works in the Biko language can be accessed by his site Suralista. Next, we have Jason Chancoco, a multi-awarded contemporary writer in Biko, Eriganon, Filipino, and English languages. His works can be um, accessed in his sites also named Bahagbayon, a Bicol-based literary blog. Next, we have here Mariana Perfecto, the fifth governor of Ambus Camarines and considered as the father of both Bicol and Visayan literature. He established the first printing press in the Bicol region, published An Parabarita in year 1899 to 1900s, the region's first local newspaper. His road is known for and is set up the first printing press in the Bicol region, diba? so the Librerea e Imprenta Mariana. He wrote a number of poems and plays and translated a number of religious tracts, novenas, poems, short dramas, and linguistic um, works to both Ilongo and Bicol languages. And last, we have Juan Rafael Bel Belgica Jr. A writer, poet, and academian. He co authored Dorongan Mga Rawit Dawit in year 2003, a collection of Bicol poetry. So, next, it's going to discuss the Bicol literature of the Philippines. So, Bicol is the language of almost 5 million people in the provinces of Albay, Camarones Norte, Camarones Sur. Catanduanes, Masbate, and Sorsogon that constitute the Bicol region. The Bicol people have a writing tradition with roots in its ancient folkways. Still extant are charm verses exploiting the possibilities of words in folk poems and narratives um, with mythical content and bound with early historical fragments which form part of the people's lives. Polynesian stifled native writing, however. Only after about two centuries later did the, um, the people begin to write poems and plays um, adapted from biblical stories, this time in the Spanish writing system. So, um, these dramatic tropes were street um, presentations during May festivals, for example, kanang mga street dances sa, kanang, sa Sinulog, yana, so Christmas, Easter, and Lent Pod. So, in 1890, the first Bicol newspaper, An Parabarita, or the Newsman, was established or published by Mariana Perfecto, who also established the first printing press, um, Emprenta di Nostra Senora di Pina Francia. In the midst of numerous devotionals and religious poems, there appeared two protest plays, um, and Pangyao kan mga pastores kan pagkamundag ni Jesus duman sa portal sa Belen, or the awakening of shepherds of Jesus' birth. It is by Mariano Perfecto and Kumidya na dapit sa Jesus o magna kahayagan kan pagkamundag ni Jesus or a play about God of mat or matters concerning the birth of Jesus. So, first play says that the people accepted the faith, but not the Spaniards. And the second tries to localize the character Mary, humanize um, Herodes, and make the coronation of Mary an occasion of rivalry through um, two comic characters. Corridos or metrical romances 
became the main reading fair for many years. Translation from Spanish to Bicol were eagerly awaited. The writers switched to translating for the money it brought them. So, naibayad. So, in time, Bicol corridors were written. So, the most popular was Magamang Pobre or the Poor Father and Son. The Kumicha and Moromoro stayed for a long time. Almost every town boasted of a Kumicha writer and a theater group. And the lobbish and pompous Kumicha that Juan Alvarez Guerra saw in the 1880s in Albay has been so described. Count on the Bicol to write protest Kumichas. First is the Kumicha ni Hadjong Grimaldo Sarenong Erlanda by Sabas Armenta and Drama in Comedia de la Vida con de Urbano by Juan Miraflor. The first is a division from the Muro as villain theme, and the second advocated the democracy and favors electing, electing town leaders. Commonwealth period were years of poetic and dramatic productivity. The Sarsuela did not escape the Bicol's questioning bent. As Esclo Jimenez, Pagkamuot sa Banuang Tinubuan, love for the native land, demonstrated that nation, that national change can be affected through armed revolt. Jimenez wrote 25 other Sarsuelas in varying themes, mostly social criticisms. The crowds would attend the presentations. By the mid-thirties, shorter plays became the fashion. The new themes were poor versus rich, laziness versus hard work, and result and nationalism. Outstanding was Antichristo by Ustino Noida, who wrote of the inevitable conflict between individual morality and material this play is still presented today in schools in the region. The Rawit Dawit or narrative poem was a vehicle of social and political criticism. Personal poems were most plentiful. The period also produced about 20 translations of Jose Rizal's Mi Ultimo Adios to Bicol. Four poets and their works stand out, Manuel Fuentabellas and Pana or the Arrow, Clemente Alejandria's Pagaro Ayong or the Perseverance, the, um, Esca, Caudinos or the Balus Balusana or the Retribution, and Mariano Goyena's Hari or No Dali or No Don't. Great sensitivity and exquisite image are marks of these poems reaching up to lyricism. Contemporary writing just has just begun to burst with creative energy. The writers now possess the courage to deal with big themes. It began with Francisco Pinones Jr., who sounded a clarion call in his poem, An Upon Sa Ibalon Kan Mahali and Maskra, or the board in the in Ibalon Min and Mask. Society, he declared, is the board that um, brought hunger and poverty to the land. For this poem, Pinones received a CCP award. Next, Merlin, Merlinda C. Bobes, in a masterly poetic drama titled Daragang Magayon, overturns the passive maiden in the legend and makes her decisive to do her part in changing society. In her poems, Fibole Sabdul presents an idealism society with remembering one's childhood, each of them a strong and evocated, evocated portrait only a thoughtful, sensitive poet can create. For this, she merited a Palanca Award. Carlos O. Arios waves together theology and philosophy to present Bicol values and a panora panorama of Bicol scenes. And in 10 well written stories, a novel and a play, he wins the covered Palanca or CCP, Free Press, and Graphic Literary Awards. The young literary fictionist Marco Lopez Alvin Yaban, Ulysses um, P. Arios, and Lorenzo D. Paran III are, ser are searches for self-identity and nation.
The seasoned writers include Lois Cabalquento, Cody Caliha, and Rudy Alano. The Young Masters are Home Life Magazine winners Angelica Gonzalez, Ernesto Prisimo, Hasmin Liana, Victor Velasco, Nino Manaog, and Javier Olen and Cynthia Buesa. Emelina R. Rejes uh, has a Palanca Award for her environmental play, Dalawang Mukha ng Kagubatan, or The Two Faces of the Forest. Barbara Barquez Rica Fuente writes poems and paints with range. She is the first novel awardee of the UP Creative Writing Center. The Bicolano can write memorable and significant pieces. The native literary tradition has been resurrected and kept. How to make the people aware and how to make them read as well as how to multiple these writings so they can be disseminated have to be resolved. Maria Lilia F. Rialobet is the recipient of the National Award Alagad ni Balagtas by the Union ng mga Manunulat sa Pilipinas and is a National Book Awardee in year 1987 for her book, um, Philippine Drama, 12 Plays in Six Regional Languages. She wrote the first book in Bicol History and Literature, um, The Bicol of the Philippines. She teaches English and Comparative Literature in the University of the Philippines. So this is um, um, a Bicol epic entitled The Ibalong. A long time ago, there was a rich land called Ibalong. The hero Baltog who came from Botabora of the brave clan of Lipud came to this land when many monsters were still roaming in its very dark forest. He decided to stay and was the first to cultivate its field and to plant them with gabi. Then one night, a monstrous wild boar known as Tandayag saw this field and destroyed the crops. Upon knowing this, Baltog decided to look for this boar with all his courage and patience. At last, as soon as he saw it, he fearlessly wrestled with it with all his might. Baltog wasn't afraid. He was strong and brave. Though the Tandayag had very long fangs, he was able to pin down a monstrous wild boar and break apart its very big jaw bones. With this, Tendayag fell and died. After this fight, Baltog went to his house in Tundo, carrying the Tendayag's broken bones. Then he hung it on a talisai tree in front of his house. Upon learning of the victory of their chief Baltog, the people prepared a feast and celebrated. The very big jaw bones of the dead boar became an attraction for everyone. Thus came the tribes of Panikwason and Asog who marvel it. The second hero who came to the land of Ibalong was Hadjong. Together with his men, he had to fight thousands of battles and face many dangers to defeat the monster. As warriors, they first fought the one-eyed monster with the three necks in the land of Ponos. For ten months, they fought without rest, and they never stopped fighting until all these monsters were killed. Hadjong and his men made their next attack against the giant flying sharks called Triburun, which had the hardly flesh and so like teeth that, should, that could crush rocks. They continued fighting until the defeat of the last Triburun. They tamed the wild carabaos. They even drove away the giant and very fierce Sarimau, which had very sharp fingernails. And using their spears and arrows, they killed all the crocodiles, which were as big as boats. With all these killings, the rivers and swamps of Ibalong turned red with blood. It was at this time that the savage monkeys became frightened and hid themselves. Among the enemies of Hajong and his men, the serpent Oriol was the hardest to kill. Having a beautiful voice, Oriol could change its image to deceive its enemies. To capture it, Hajong tried different ways. 
but Oriol escaped every one of it and disappeared. So alone and unafraid, Hajong decided to look for Oriol in the heart of the forest. He followed the beautiful voice and was almost enchanted by it in his pursuit. Days and nights passed until Oriol came to admire Hajong's bravery and gallantry. Then the serpent helped the hero to conquer monsters, thus restoring peace to the entire Ibalong. In one of the areas of Ibalong called Ligmanan, Hajong built a town. Under his leadership and his laws, slaves and masters were treated equally. The people planted rice, and because of their high regard of him, they named this rice after him. He built the first boat to ride the waves of Ibalong seas. Through his good example, his people became inspired and came up with their own inventions. There was Kimantong who made the plow, harrow, and other farming tools. Hablon, Hablom, who invented the first loom for waving abaca clothes. Dinahong and Agta, who created the stove, cooking pot, earthen jar, and other kitchen utensils. Azural, who brilliantly thought of Selabari and started to write on a marble rock. This was a golden period in Ibalo. Then suddenly, there came a big flood caused by Unus with terrifying earthquakes. The volcanoes of Hantik, Colasi, and Irasub erupted. Rivers changed their directions, and the sea's waves rolled high. Distractions were everywhere. Soon, the earth parted, mountains sunk, a lake was formed, and many towns in Ibalong were ruined. Then appeared the giant Ravot, half man and half beast with awesome and terrifying powers. People were asking who will fight against Ravot. Subantong, the third hero, was called. He was a good friend of Hadjong. He was ordered to kill the new monster on Ibalong. To do this, he took with him a thousand warriors to attack Rabot's team. But using his wisdom against Rabot, he did not attack the giant right away. He first observed Rabot's ways. Looking around the giant's den, he discovered that there were many rocks surrounding it, and these were the people who were turned into rocks by Rabot. Bantong also learned that Rabot loved to sleep during the day and stayed awake at night. So he waited. When Rabot was already sleeping very soundly, Bantong came hear him. He cut the giant into two with his very sharp bolo, and without any struggle, Rabot died. So Ibalong was at peace once more. So the Ibalong, also known as Hajong or Hajong, is a 60-ton sub-fragment of a Bicolanofolent folk epic of Bicol region of Philippines. So, um, based, this is based on the Indian Hindu epics Ramayana and Mahabharata. The epic is said to have been narrated in verse form by a native poet called Kaduno. It was a pass. It was passed and orally until it was presumable jotted down in this complete Bicol narrative by Fray Bernardino de Melendreras de la Trinidad. The Ibalong portrays did in heroic proportions, centering on white men or Tawong Lipod, who were warrior heroes named, among others, Bal Baltog, Hajong, and Bantong. They became the uh, they came from Bolta Baras, um, settling and ruling the Kolanja and its inhabitants. The epic is set in the land of Aslon and Ibalong. The mountains Asug, Masaraga, Isarug, and Limnyong were prominent featured of the area. So the Ibalong story is a folk epic of the people of Bicol Peninsula in the Philippines. It tells the story of three legendary ancient um, heroic seizing the virginal land of Ibalong and fighting numerous enemies including the monsters. The hero's names were Baltog, who killed the man-eating wild boar, Tandayag, and Hajong, who defeated the evil serpent Oriol, and Bantog, who won over the first monster, Rabot. The Ibalong Festival, held every August in Legazpi City in the Philippines, celebrates the epic story. 
So that's all. Thank you.